The Hornets return to FA Cup action on Sunday afternoon when they travel to Arsenal in a quarter final of the FA Cup. Reg, a tough one to call this one in terms of Arsenal, the way they line up and team. Injuries and, of course, Barcelona coming up on Wednesday. So, just how do you see Arsenal lining up to start with? Well, I think I don't. I wouldn't like to be Wenger at this moment in time, anyway, because it, it's so difficult to call. I mean, off the back of a great result against Hull in the FA Cup, four 0 victory there, and just looking at Hull, how they press. I just don't need to get the pressing game right in that game. I just, you know, you, you go back to games Arsenal had, the difficult games against Tottenham and Manchester United, and Manchester United in particular, how they pressed in midfield was was very impressive. And I just think we obviously we'll talk about that in a moment, but just going touching on the team, you know, it's so difficult to call for a number of reasons. Obviously, Wenger looked to rest players in in the FA Cup game. It's a quarter final now. He knows a domestic trophy. He knows he wants to win it again. Does he go back in there with a bit of a stronger side after giving those players a rest? Also, with the game as you mentioned against Barcelona on Wednesday, you know, does he want to rest those players to? to put the importance into that did he see enough of Barcelona the other day to think do you know what it's going to be very very difficult to get anything from Barcelona so does he now put all his you know interest into this FA Cup tie then we have to mention the injuries three out of back four going off in the in the game against Hull Ramsey being the other player you know Murta Saka Gabriela Monreal all going off injured in that game now what we're led to believe is Gabriel and Mertesacker was only a knock. They may come back in the team. But the only player I can say, yes, he will definitely play is a spina. Because <laughs> Czech, obviously with the calf injury, you know, you, you look around the team, you look how many players they are missing in really key areas. You know, it's a difficult team to call. But I'm sure we'll pick the brains of it now and try and put a team together for people to, to get an idea. Yeah, of course, picking up on that then. So looking at a bat five start, we expect Ospina in goal, Gibbs at left back, all being well, Merce, Saka and Gabriel's coming to centre back and Bellerin at right back. That's if they go full strength, I think. They, you know, Bellerin is there, but they have Chambers as well. And Chambers has done quite well. And, you know, it isn't, it's also good to see the, the younger players. And that's one thing I do with Mario about Arsenal, I have to say. They do give the younger players an opportunity and they give them opportunities in big games as well. And that kind of gets them straight into the team and, and really feeling the pressure of being surrounded, I suppose, by the Emirates and, and Premier League games. I think he's done well this season when he has played, but if they are going to go full strength, I fully expect Bellerin to go back in there. Uh, the midfield is, is probably harder to choose. Yeah, you know, Coquelin obviously got sent off recently, but he is a key, he is a key player for them in midfield, and if they're going to go full strength, I can't see them looking past that. And El Nenny beside him, he is like, he just grinds. He really wants to break the play up. I thought against Tottenham, he was quite poor on the ball, has to be said. I thought he gave the ball away a lot. I think Kane had a few opportunities just from picking the ball up. And then he held the ball for probably too long, but he does break the play up. Has to be said, that's a real strength in his game and probably something that Arsenal have missed for quite a while. You know, they had Flamini in there against Hull, but then they had to change the whole shape. And that with the injuries that happened early in the first half. So... Difficult then, and I will leave you to this next four because that's where I think really is you can try and you know decide on players where, where they'll play and if they'll play. So going forward into the front four, you've got Campbell, Ozil, Sanchez, Drew, four of those. How do you expect them to line up? You've got three here and one up top. Is that Drew up top or how do you see it? Difficult one because Giroud plays a completely different game than the other guys. Sanchez playing as a nine or Giroud playing as a nine just completely changes how they're going to look to play. The two of them are fantastic footballers. Let's be, you know, let's not like, be mistaken by their ability, both of them. But I think when Giroud came off the bench and at Vicarage Road, when they obviously changed the game last 10, 20 minutes, it was a big part of that. It was a focal point for them, and they need that in, in certain games. You look at the game against Tottenham, and I just think Welbeck ran the line and stretched it very well, but he didn't really offer that focal point to be able to join in and create from you know midfielders advancing and third man runners, where you need to be a number nine to hold up sometimes. Looking at it, it's very hard to predict this. Um, Campbell played here against Hull, and Will he play again? I don't know. He, he did okay. He did play 90 minutes. I just think the one thing, if they're going to go full strength, they're going to look at the FA Cup as we want to progress in this and really we want to get to the final and with a chance of winning it again. I can't see Oza being overlooked. I think he's so important in this 10 role. I think he's probably one of the best in the Premier League because he comes so deep. He comes in all the way into midfield to pick up the ball. Makes it very easy for his two midfielders to play him in. But when you have Ozil on the ball, anywhere in that half, these players are going to make moves because they know he has the ability to find them. 
And what he's going to do is just going to join her in and create from those positions. You have four fantastic attacking players, whatever they do, and you definitely have pace. One thing we will mention, though, and a point I wanted to, to get onto is when they do attack, I just think they haven't really got the balance that most teams do have. So when you'll see, if it is Giroud, if it is Sanchez, he will attack. If it's Walcott, maybe down this side. Campbell, if it's right on, on, on this side, or Welbeck. And you've got Ozil ar arriving, obviously looking to create. These two hold midfield players, Coquelin, mentioned El Nenny. They need to create the balance to be able to prevent any counter-attacks because what I always find with Arsenal, when they are stepping up the field to attack, they will join a full-back in, two centre-halves are going to step up, there's going to be another full-back joined in, always one midfielder will go. When we can break with a good direct pass forward, they're susceptible for that counter-attack and it's been seen already this season, counter-attacks against Arsenal, even though they're a counter-attacking team themselves, they can leave themselves wide open at the back. So looking at sort of the way we will set up that area there, the sort of middle of the pitch and breaking from the back with pace is a real area we can get at them and look to have success. Yes, exactly. So we set them up in a 4-2-3-1. I think that's generally how Arsenal have looked to play this year. A lot of top European sides this season have implemented this 4-2-3-1 shape. And they do look to play through midfield. That's what Arsenal's strength is. They play football, fantastic technical players, and they've... You know, in midfield, probably the lesser of the technical ability they have. What I was mentioning before about Manchester United when they played them and they lost 3-2, I just thought United had to set up perfect. They man-marked in midfield. Schneidel and Mata and Herrera basically played in midfield as a three. But they didn't play. So what we're used to seeing here is we've got two whole midfield players and an advanced midfield player. The way United did it was one whole midfield player and two advanced so what that allowed them to do is they could really kind of link on. So these were man-marked. You had the attacking midfield player, if in this case it was Ozil, and they did a really good job on them. What that did, did, did do, sorry, two centre-halves have to step into midfield with the ball. They have to be your creative players to be able to play through the thirds. If they can't play through the thirds, you have to play a direct ball or stretch it, as we said about Tottenham, um, the game against Tottenham. Welbeck did it very well, but he had to do it because they didn't really have many options in midfield more so against United. United really did press well, and I think that's going to be key from Watford's shape. And we do do it very well, dropping off. I just think we need to be careful about dropping off again. We dropped off against them in the last 20 minutes at home, and they hurt us. This time, I think we really put the game to them. This is an FA Cup tie. You've got nothing to lose, everything to gain, try and get in the next round, really put pressure on, or, or on Arsenal. So I guess looking at that pressing game, it's if you press up high, the danger is then that the back four don't need to become a stretch. So it's very important from a Watford perspective that if we press high from the front with the lights of Agarlo, Dini, press and I and trying to force them to go along that as a back four and as a team, we all squeeze up together as well and get behind them. Yeah, it's, it's very important to condense the pitch against Arsenal. You can't leave massive gaps because what you'll see is the attacking players, they're clever. They will exploit those massive gaps if you do leave them. Now, I haven't seen Watford this season really be stretched, to be honest. I think the shape has been fantastic. Either way, they play at the 4-2-3-1, 4-3-2-1, or just recently we've seen more of the 4-4-2. I just think... If you leave massive gaps for these attacking players, they will combine well. You always will have willing runners from the fullbacks who can deliver. We know Gibbs with a fantastic left foot on the right side. Bellerin, he was here when I was here um, when I came back, and he's just so fast. He's just so fast. He can run up and down that line all day long. You don't need to worry about him getting back in because he'll get back in in a, in a heartbeat. But as I mentioned, when we do press, we need to make. Arsenal make mistakes like we mentioned about El Nenny. if he's on the ball and we can close him down and congest in midfield where I predict we'll have most of our bodies playing quite narrow we need to close these players down if we can nick the ball Igalo and Dini on the shoulder the two centre halves I think we will be able to get in depending on how Mertesacker plays he's not the fastest I think I'm probably quicker than him with a sore knee so at the moment I think if we can get in on being behind him there'll be fantastic opportunities at goal as you're looking at the game, Arsenal going forward, you touch on the full-backs there, Gibbs pushing forward, getting crossed into the box, whether it's Gibbs and Mourinho at left-back or Chambers and Bellerin at right-back, that's the way Arsenal plays, and they like to get the full-backs forward and join them with the attacks. Yeah, they're just extra bodies, so if they do go and attack, as we did already show you, it's just it, we'll just give you an example of, of, of a phase happening in the game. So your left-back's going to advance the players down the left-hand side, one of your whole midfield players will join in, one of your has to balance... 
one of your fullbacks should stay on hold and your fullbacks should be there, your centre halves in the middle. Basically, they're going to attack. They're going to try and get across in the box. That's their main aim. They'll try and combine, get across in the box. Support from Ozil coming from here. And you're looking for your balance from one of your whole midfield players. This breaks down. If that first ball can get contact from one of the Watford players and hold it up, they really only have four players. It's all then dependent on who are going to be the breaking runners from midfield. And if we can keep two up top with Igalo and Dini, it's basically not really respecting Arsenal as much as possibly teams have done. But it's a cup game. You're not going to respect them the same. This is just going to be all or nothing. So when opportunities are going to be to play the ball down the line, you've got runners there, just let the midfielders break. You're going to have to create those opportunities. But I understand you can't lose the game in the first half. You need to be able to keep it solid, keep it tight. Frustrate Arsenal as such into making these mistakes. They're going to have to flood men forward. They will feel an attack and they're an attacking team. That's when we, I think we can kind of smell the counter-attack. And more from a defensive point of view now for Arsenal, when we're looking to attack and get success, how will Arsenal look to nullify us and stop us threatening them? Well, Arsenal do try and be a high-press team. It's you know they, they do try and hunt the ball. I just think it's a little bit loose at times. The attacking players, you know, Watford aren't exactly a team that really look to play out. They look to get the ball into midfield or further up the pitch and look to join in and create attacks from, from probably more direct passing. But when the game opens up a little bit, you've seen Watford play. We've got fantastic players in midfield. And one thing that United, or sorry, Arsenal were hurt with against United was they went and pressed and their attacking players pressed the ball. United looked to miss out midfield in that. So gaps opened up what you had Juan Mata being your intelligent midfield player came into fantastic little holes and he was able to pick up the ball and get turned and that getting turned is the problem which I see with Arsenal these guys are pressing hard to try and close you down and then when a pass can get into Mata and he's three or four yards to get turned players like Juan Mata are going to hurt you and that's what I just think we need our intelligent midfield players to create or realize that these gaps are open get turned and be able to attack a outnumbered at times Arsenal defensive holding four with two holding midfield players.